Hi, and welcome to Maths Class. Today we're learning to solve equations. And we've got two methods to solve equations. They're really the same thing, but we start with the method today, which is called backtracking. And then we, when we get to the next lesson, we're gonna build on our knowledge of backtracking and learn how to do it another way. Ultimately, we've really only got one way of doing it, but we're just in the learning stages. So we're going to use backtracking to solve equations. First of all, what I want you to do is remember substitution. So if X is five, then evaluate three X minus one. Just pause the video and go ahead and do that. Okay, that's my solution. So when X is five, I know that three X minus one is 14. Now, what we're doing when we solve an equation is sort of that in reverse. I've got three X minus one equals 14, and I'm asked to solve, which means find the value of X. All right, now, the way I do that is one of the things that I think about is how did I build from this beginning to get the number 14? So the first stage we're looking at is this. I start with X. The next thing I have is three times my X value. So the next thing I did was I had three X. And then the last step is this subtraction of one which gives me three X minus one. So I start with X, I multiply it by three to get three X, and then I subtract one to get three X minus one. Now I just wanna show you how important it is to get the order of these things right. We're going to do this example. See how it looks nearly the same, but it's different. So let's look at this three times X minus one when X is five. So three times X minus one when X is five is gonna give me three times five minus one, which is three times four, which is 12. So different answer, 14 here, 12 here. So let's look at my, um, let's call this a flow diagram, okay? My flow diagram here is different because I started in the brackets and because of my brackets, my order of operations tells me to do the brackets first. So I started with X and the first thing I do here is I subtract the one. The first thing I did was go five minus one. So I subtract one to get X minus one and then I multiplied by three which gave me three times X minus one. So let's compare now. In the first example, I multiplied by three first to get three X, and then I subtracted one to get three X minus one. In my second example, I subtract one first to get X minus one, and then I multiply by three, which gives me three times X minus one. So one of the skills we need is drawing the forward flow diagram. And what we're gonna do in backtracking is go backwards to get the answer. Now, before we get to backtracking, I just wanna remind you about a thing called inverse operations. I don't know if you've met this word before, but I'm sure you'll understand the idea. Inverse operations do the opposite. So for example, if I add five, then the inverse operation is going to be subtract five. And the test, if it's inverse, is you start with a number, like let's start with 10, and then you add five, you get 15, and then you subtract five, and you're back where you started. That's the whole point of inverse operations. They take us back to where we started. So the next example is if I divide by four and then I multiply by four. So if I take the number 20, then I divide it by four, I get five. 
then I multiply by 4, I'm back where I started at 20. And that's what inverse operations do. Now there are lots of pairs of inverse operations, but for now what we're going to focus on is the two we've just talked about. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. So what we're going to do in backtracking is if I go back to my example that I had here, what I want to do is if I started with an unknown number x and I multiplied it by 3 and then I subtracted 1 and I got 14, how can I use that information to figure out what x was that I started with? So what I do is this. Underneath um, the equation, I'm going to write the number 14 because this is the equation that I'm trying to solve. 3x minus 1 equals 14. Now I know we know the answer, but I'm sh explaining to you how backtracking works and we're going to practice with these. So what I'm going to do is the inverse operation of minus 1 and I'm going backwards from 14. So the inverse operation of minus 1 is plus 1. So if I take 14 and then add 1, I'm going to get 15. What's the inverse operation of times 3? Write it down here on the arrow. You should have written divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. Now, I want you to notice that at every step here, these parts were equal, right? 3x minus 1 is equal to 14. The 3x part is equal to 15 and the x is equal to 5. So my solution then is x equals 5. So now we're going to use this method with a new example where we don't yet know the solution. So here's my example. Now you might be able to do this one by inspection and if you can't can that's great because you can already think what the answer is but I want you to make sure that you practice using this method because we, we're learning this method so that when the questions get complex we've got a method that we can use. So 2 times x plus 4 in brackets is going to equal 12. So what I'm going to start by doing is I've got to build my forward going flow chart and that always starts with x and then I think about what do I have to do to x. So if I did a substitution, what would I do? Well, because of the brackets, the first thing I would do is I would add 4 plus 4. And that gives me x plus 4. And then the next thing I would have to do is multiply by this 2. And that would give me 2 times x plus 4. I've now got an expression that equals the left hand side of my equation. So it's going to equal 12. So now I want to use backtracking to figure out what x is. So backtracking uses inverse operations. The inverse operation of times 2 is, you fill it in, and the inverse operation of plus 4 is, you fill it in. Take a moment. So this is what I did. Divided by 2 here. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then plus 4 gives me minus 4 here. So 6 minus 4 is 2. So the solution that I found is x equals 2. I'm going to check my answer. 2 plus 4 gives me 6. Multiplied by 2 gives me 12. I found the right answer. That's awesome. So this video showed you how to use backtracking to solve equations. And in the next video, we're going to explore how to push backtracking to use it to a method called the balance method. And you'll see that in the next video. Bye.